There is no good that I can't get pretty much online uh, or, or indeed in my high street or indeed in my local supermarket at the moment. I'm amazed at the brilliance of the British logistics companies and what have you and the retailers, what have you. What, what, where are the problems arising, Adam, as well? Because it seems that everyone is pretty prepared and actually uh, goods are continuing to flow. Well, I think preparedness is very definitely a mixed bag. You have a lot of businesses, larger firms in particular, with very sophisticated logistics operations that have been able to do more to get ready. Uh, you'll have a lot of smaller companies, however, and those who use online platforms and other distributors who perhaps may be a bit caught out because, of course, they didn't get the details of the new trading arrangements until Christmas Eve which was only a week before they came into effect. So I think we will see over the next quarter or two some bumps in the road for many businesses uh, and many companies having belatedly to get to grips with new procedures through no fault of their own. Uh, so it will be interesting to see how that happens and whether there will indeed be some limitations or some hiccups in the supply chain. Adam, in terms of the, the, the bright new future, um, what are your members asking you about? Is there an increase in inquiries about opportunities away from EU markets? Give us a sense of how your membership are looking to seize the opportunity that may exist. Well, there has been an increase in interest in markets all across the world for some years now, really for about a decade. And we've seen that reflected in the proportion of the UK's trade that goes to non-EU versus EU markets. That non-EU trade has been increasing for some time. And our British Chambers of Commerce in markets all across the world are reporting increased levels of interest. But we can't forget, of course, that the European market is still almost 45% percent of the UK's exports by value um, and, and quite a bit of our imports trade as well and things like fresh food and a range of, of, of other things. So it is still going to be an important market and it is one where businesses are having to grapple with some pretty significant changes right now. But the point is that that's come down from something more like 60 percent, hasn't it, Adam? The reality is that British business now is having to focus on some of the faster growing parts of the world rather than the EU, where we see e economies uh, at the moment um, uh, s somewhat um, drifting. Well, that is certainly the case. The number of UK firms that you see with a newfound interest in the ASEAN markets or the Pacific Rim, for example, or Latin America, which has been overlooked by many British companies for a long time, is significant. So there are global opportunities out there for British firms. There is strong interest in taking up those opportunities, but there's a desire to not to lose too much market access closer to home. Because, of course, most of the companies we have in our membership that trade around the world also trade quite significantly with the European Union. It's not an either or proposition.